Hello and welcome back to the Alchemic Blast. Today I'm going to be doing a shorter video than the last one, but it's going to be sort of a continuation on from the last one because again we're still working with copper compounds. So instead of blue verditer, we're going to do green verditer this time, which is essentially synthetic malachite. So if azurite is the blue copper carbonate in nature, malachite is the green version in nature and so what we're doing today is making essentially the green variant of the copper carbonate. Now I'm yet to fully perfect this technique and I'm still playing around and learning and so far what I'm going to show you today is just my method for making a fairly usable and serviceable green malachite style pigment. Um, I think there's ways in which I could get the tone deeper and some of the particle sizes larger or the crystals larger, but this is a fairly decent way of ensuring that I can get a good green that works. And it's a really, really simple process in comparison to the blue verditer which we went through last week, which was a very long drawn out process and difficult. And you know how I kept saying that to get that pure blue is always challenging and to remove the hints of green was a lot harder and it was very often that when you did the synthesis of making copper carbonates from copper sulfates or things like that you ended up with a bluish green. What we're trying to do today is almost the opposite. We're trying to have less and less of the blue in there and more of just a pure green uh, result. So all we're going to be working with today is copper sulfate, which we have here in a little porcelain dish. We have 20 grams of copper sulfate, and then we also have 20 grams of sodium bicarbonate. And I think there is a reason to use sodium bicarbonate over sodium carbonate um, for this process, as I think the additional carbonate makes the reaction happen in such a way that we end up with a more green product than if we just use sodium carbonate. I'm not entirely sure of the chemistry behind that, but that's what I've found so far. So the first thing we're going to do is make a 10% solution of copper sulfate. So we have 200 mils of water here and 20 grams of copper sulfate. And we're going to add that in and stir it until it's dissolved. Now, one of the key features of this process is that we're doing it quite hot. So this is some freshly boiled water on the hot plate. The hot plate is maxed out, keeping it nice and hot. So the water should be roughly somewhere in the order of at least 80 degrees centigrade. Um, this will mean that the dissolution will be much, much quicker of our copper sulfate. In fact, it's almost immediately we get a nice clear blue solution as a result. So the next thing is we're going to grab another beaker with 100 mils of hot water in there as well and to that we're going to add in our sodium carbonate, sorry our sodium bicarbonate. So now that we have our solution of sodium bicarbonate we're going to slowly begin adding that to our solution of copper sulfate. Important to go slowly here because both are hot and it's going to cause a lot of foaming and frothing to occur as you'll see quite quickly. You'll see that characteristic turquoisey blue green color beginning as it starts to produce. We might slowly ramp up the stirring as the precipitate is formed. But as we add, we should slowly head towards a more of a green color. Again, being very careful that we don't let the mixture bubble over the top here. As you can see, it's already starting to green up a fair bit. And you see, at a certain point, it stops reacting 
and we know that we are complete. Basically, I'm just going to let this stir for a little bit longer and I'm actually just going to add a tiny bit of fresh hot water to this. And we're just looking to make sure that there aren't any traces of blue left and then we have quite a nice clear, precise green colour, which I think we do. I'm going to stop the stirring. And we're going to let the precipitate settle out, which should happen quite quickly because it's hot. And we'll assess the colour from there. And then we'll move on to filtering, washing and drying. One of the advantages of filtering hot is it makes it very quick to filter and so one thing we're going to do is just rinse it with some extra hot water to clean out any excess sodium bicarbonate that may be in there and just to give us a nice clean pigment when we're done. So here we have the freshly washed pigment and filtered and now we just have to dry it and we'll get a final look at it and then we'll make up a little bit of it into a paint and see what its color looks like as a watercolor paint but other than that this is a very simple and quick process. So after washing, filtering and drying the pigment we're left with this sort of rather soft pale minty green lime green sort of powder that is our essentially our synthetic melakite pigment our um, green verdita green bice is another name for it um, and while it doesn't look like much here it does end up mixing up into quite a lovely paint which i have a little bit here which we will just paint up a small sample so you can get an idea of the color that I'm talking about. It's transparent as is the way with a lot of the copper colors are and they're not overly strong but they can make nice colors in watercolor. You can go from quite a rich sort of greeny color to a very transparent pale gentle lime mint green very much reminiscent of some of the parts of a malachite crystal where you'll get these lighter striations of green coupled with those much much darker greens but essentially that's what we're looking at there and you can go very much from that deeper right through to that gentle pale there so that's it for this episode. It was a relatively quick and simple process, particularly in relation to how complex and long the blue verditer was. Um, making the green variant is a lot easier. As I said, there's a lot of improvement and a lot of work I could do to improve this process. I really want to know how to get those sort of deeper um, tones that you get in malachite crystals. This is more the sort of mid to light tone that you get from malachite, not that dark, deeper tone. And a lot of that is actually to do with particle size. So if you were to take genuine malachite crystals and crush them up and grind them, you could get quite a deep pigment from just grinding up the stones, but you would actually find that that pigment was still very coarse when it came to painting it out. And the finer you grind down the stone, the paler and paler it gets, till you get something not too dissimilar to what I'm working with here with my synthetic malachite. So even though it's not 
the same level of depth as the natural one. I think this pigment is still a very usable pigment. Again, in watercolor, it's a very easy, serviceable pigment and does some really nice um, tones and effects um, that I really, really enjoy. In oils, it should behave quite well too, because, you know, unlike the blue vertiter, which in oils will turn green, this is already green. So if it I'll have to do some playing around in oils to see what kind of tonal changes you'll get as, a, as the copper carbonate reacts with the green. You may end up getting a deepening of the tone, it may become less of that um, malachite greeniness to more of a like leafy foresty greeniness, it's hard to tell. Um, anyway, short episode today, so thanks everybody for tuning in, it's been a blast, it's a, I really enjoy this playing around with copper compounds. There will be more copper pigment um, work coming in the future as I'm working on some vertigris projects and playing around with copper acetates and stuff like that. So we'll see further down the track some, some different kinds of copper work. Anyway, so thanks um, once again to my Patreons, thanks to everybody who supports the Alchemical Arts, uh, thanks to anyone who's checked out any of our watercolours and been using them and playing with them, that's been really massive help. Again, this particular colour should be hitting the Alchemical Arts store soon, so if you enjoy the Malachite and want to get something and play around with it as a watercolour, feel free to check the link below. Otherwise, this is a really easy pigment to make. One where you can get copper sulfate from hard where stores and gardening supply stores and you can get sodium bicarbonate from the supermarket. So I actually urge people go out and try and make this one yourself. It's really quite simple. It's not particularly toxic to work with. I mean, you have to be careful with copper compounds, but nonetheless, this is very simple and very easy. So give it a go. See if you see if you like the results that you get. Anyway, catch you all next time and thanks for watching.